We humans have a problem. Our planet will be uninhabitable in a few hundred thousand years, or perhaps as soon as 10,000. The climate is getting too hot. The water could increasingly evaporate. The spread of deserts is advancing. And if we don't get our exhaust problem under control, these changes will proceed much faster. Mankind is looking for an alternate planet. And within our star system, so far, only Mars is available as an alternative. But Mars is inhospitable, has no atmosphere, no oxygen to breathe, and the radiation is very high. How promising was the discovery of Kepler 22b, an exoplanet that could be confusingly similar to our Earth? Find out how and if we can once colonize this planet in this video. Stay tuned, because it's going to be exciting. And of course, as always, we welcome your personal contributions on the topic at the end of the video. Is Kepler 22b the new Earth? In 2009, Photographs of the star Kepler-22 revealed a suspicious, tiny dot. Just one year later, renewed scientific research confirmed that this dot was very likely an exoplanet. Final confirmation came in 2011, making 22b one of the first exoplanets to be detected by the Kepler mission. And it was to get much better. Because even the first find turned out to be a bullseye. More and more evidence suggested that Kepler-22b was an Earth-like planet. Earth-like in astronomers' jargon means, first of all, that the exoplanet is in the habitable zone of its star. Next, factors such as the size, mass, orbital velocity, and proper rotation are determined. Finally, scientists take aim at the associated star. Kepler-22 is a yellow dwarf similar to our Sun, and the star is even about the same age as our Sun, 4 billion years old. With only 80% of the luminosity of our Sun, Kepler-22 is a bit dimmer and cooler. However, since the exoplanet Kepler-22b is slightly closer to its star than we are to our Sun, this difference in luminosity would be beneficial. Compared to our position in the star system, Kepler-22b would be somewhere between Earth and Venus. And as we all know, it's much too hot on Venus for life forms like us, or even animals and planets. However, Kepler-22b probably gets just the right amount of heat and light due to its proximity to its less luminous planet. But even that doesn't make a new Earth. If the planet lacks a protective atmosphere, the cozy temperatures would be over. During the day, it would be about 100 degrees Celsius, or hotter, and at night, minus degrees in the three-digit range, turning it extremely cold. On Earth, it would be much hotter without the protective mantle of gases and dust, and the cosmic radiation would cause problems for organic life forms. The Living Conditions of Kepler-22b Scientists have been able to confirm that Kepler-22b is 2.4 times the size of Earth. Presumably, the surface is a comfortable 22 degrees Celsius. For a long time after its discovery, the exoplanet was classified as the most Earth-like of all planets outside the solar system. Probably, the planet possesses a peculiarity which already, again, questions its choice as an alternative planet for mankind because Kepler-22b is very probably much denser than the Earth. About 65% of our terrestrial gravitational pull means practically six times stronger gravity. If you and I were to step out of a spaceship on the planet, we would probably slump to the ground first and would need real muscle power to get up again or even to walk. However, it's questionable whether it would even come to that because very likely, our spaceship or our space capsule would have already plopped down on the surface of the planet like a wet sack. Scientists could certainly iron out the technical details in a few dozen or hundred years and make a soft landing possible. But what about our bodies? 
Not only could six times stronger gravity make body weight seem much heavier, but blood would be pumped more heavily through the veins and other bodily fluids would also have completely different behavior. According to experts, if there are living beings on Kepler 22b, they are very sturdily built, muscular, and probably have thicker body fluids than we do. Plants and animals would certainly look very different on Kepler 22b. Conceivable would also be the existence of a form of life that we don't yet know of or can imagine. The Earth alone shows that there is an unbelievable variety of life forms and that the intelligence of life always manages to adapt to changing conditions through evolutionary processes. But we don't have to give up our human dreams of a second Earth in space quite yet. Because up to now, the strong gravity on the planet is a pure assumption and not certainly confirmed. Unfortunately, it's also not yet confirmed that Kepler 22b is a rocky planet. It would also be possible that this exoplanet is a pure gas planet, or similar to Neptune, a gas planet with a solid core. The Kepler telescope was one of the first telescopes which could prove the existence of exoplanets with certainty. Only we humans can see at present also with the best telescopes, none of the planets directly and clearly. The previous knowledge about planets outside our solar system is based on calculations. From the size of the dark spot visible in front of Kepler-22, from its motion patterns, the repetition rate, as well as minimal changes in the proper motion of the star Kepler-22. From these parameters, scientists can calculate a surprising amount, but we won't have certainty about the details until we're able to observe exoplanets more directly. The new James Webb Space Telescope, after all, will already be scanning the exoplanet's environments for signatures of certain elements and gases. For example, researchers on Earth will be able to determine whether or not a planet has an atmosphere. How long a Kepler-22b year lasts, for example, was very easy to determine. Every 290 days, the dark spot appeared at the same position. Thus, a year on this planet lasts 75 days less than it does for us. If we could ever determine whether Kepler-22b has a water-rich atmosphere, conclusions about the presence of water or oceans on the surface would of course be possible. Because without water, there's no life. Water, of course, would then also have to be present in a quality conducive to life. Salt water allows a certain richness of species to thrive, but on our planet, all land creatures need fresh water to drink. Before ever a mission with settlers to a strange planet sets off, all these questions would have to be clarified surely, otherwise a mission would resemble a suicide mission with extremely uncertain exit. At present, we know too little about the axis and rotation of the planet, whether it has seasons or a moon. Moons are even harder to spot in the vastness of the cosmos than exoplanets. Assuming we knew all these things, and they were promising, there would still be another problem in finding new worlds in the cosmos. The Journey to Kepler-22b The planet Kepler-22b lies about 635 light-years away from the Earth. This means that already, the light, which is known to travel very fast, needs seven lifetimes of an average human being to cover the distance. With our presently available technical means, the Kepler-22 system would very likely be unreachable even if humans set out and lived seven or eight generations just in a spaceship until they reached their destination. Constructing such a spacecraft to last that long would be difficult. The fuel tanks would have to be incredibly large and probably a mission would fail technically on these two factors alone. People would also be traveling in zero gravity, and very likely their bodies would suffer the worst consequences of muscle atrophy and bone decomposition after only a few years. The consequences of space radiation would also be hardly foreseeable or reasonable. At present, we would not even be able to travel to our nearest cosmic neighbor, the Alpha Centauri system, 
If we are lucky, we humans will make it to Mars in the next decade. So what's the point of searching for exoplanets? Now, you might ask yourselves, perhaps completely correctly, why humans look then at all for Earth-similar exoplanets or scientists about alternative worlds. Well, science and progress do not sleep. We do not know what technical possibilities we will have in 100 or 1,000 years. The last months, some international research teams have reported immense progress in the real development of a warp drive. In theory, this has existed since the 1990s. However, practical propulsion has still been a problem. But experts suspect that it will take another 50 years at most for us humans to overcome this problem. By creating a warp bubble, a spaceship could move through space without moving at all. Simply put, this propulsion works by distorting space-time. Open it at the front, compress it at the back, and a vehicle slips through the resulting fold in time and space. Sound fantastic? Yes, but in an experiment, this has already been achieved with a spaceship one millimeter in size. With this form of locomotion, people would not be exposed to weightlessness or space radiation for long, and the travel time would hardly differ. Regardless of whether the journey is to Mars, Alpha Centauri, or the Kepler-22 system, it would only take a few moments. With a little help from a friend. Already, the Beatles sang that with a little help from a friend, everything would be better. We humans are not only on the lookout for second Earths or potentially habitable planets in the vastness of space. We're also searching for other living beings and inhabited planets. According to statistics, there must be at least several hundred more planets in the Milky Way alone that harbor some form of organic life. Intelligent civilizations could number a handful or even thousands. The Milky Way alone is incredibly large, and we know of only 5,000 exoplanets out of probably billions. If we could make contact with an advanced civilization that has faster than light modes of propulsion, we Earthlings could get some technical tutoring and maybe travel space soon. Well, does that sound fantastic, unbelievable, or just plain impossible to you? What do you think about our future as a civilization on Earth, our possibilities to travel in space, and possible contacts to other life forms in space? Let us know and share your ideas and your very own opinion with us in the comments. We thank you for joining us today and look forward to welcoming you back to Simply Space soon.